Well, hello, YouTube friends. I'm here to talk to you today about the Govi Flow Bar Pros. If you're looking for a lighting ecosystem, let me show you the Govi. Is it a Philips Hue killer? What does this do? Can it connect to your smart home? Can it provide ambiance lighting? How well does it work with movies and music? Interested? Keep watching. The naming convention of this product, and to be honest, all of their product line, is quite frankly confusing. But if you go on the website and you go under TV gaming, you're gonna see a few products and there's gonna be four that look so similar and it can be confusing the first time you're ever introduced to their ecosystem and then you understand. There's a little bit of a learning curve with their products. So the Gofi Flow Bar Pro is the one with the camera so it can work with the movies. This is something that's recommended for 45 inches and under because if not, you're not gonna get really the whole like ambiance setting. They have also a flow bar that doesn't have the camera. And then they have the flow bar immersion kit, I believe they call that includes this as well as the LED strip. So that's for bigger TVs. This one is the Flow Bar Pro. So the two lights like this with the camera, with the control box captures the music and can allow you to do basic controls that you may use, but you're unlikely to use this. So why did I choose the Flow Bar Pro? I was actually looking into Philips ecosystem for a while, realized how expensive it is because you have to buy the bridge, you have to buy all these other things. Also slight learning curve with understanding their product line. I guess that's kind of just how it is with these electronics now. It's a little bit, a little bit of learning curve to understand all the different components that you need. This one, you don't need anything else. If you buy the Flowbar Pro with the camera, everything you need is in here. For a small TV, it's recommended for 45 inches and under, and my TV sits at 40 inches. And the reason I chose this instead of the LED strip, I wanted something more versatile that I could bring to parties, have a lighting show go on in the background. However, spoiler alert, the wall glides, which I have right there in the back of my sofa, also that I will be reviewing. Those ones actually are way better for music and parties, but that's a video for another time. I got this on sale during the Black Friday sale. I have all the product links in my description below. By the way, they're affiliate links. So if ever you do decide to buy, buying through those links costs you nothing, but will help the channel. One thing I didn't like, and I asked customer services, I believe before purchasing, but they did not understand my question. They gave me the wrong information, but you cannot, unfortunately, for the time being, upgrade the Flowbar Pro to the immersion kit. As in, you can't buy this, and then later decide to buy an LED strip and add it on. So that is a big negative in my books. I wish that they had that type of thing so people could easily upgrade because the control box that comes with this, it only has one input for your lights. It doesn't have a second input for the LED strips. That's something I really wish that GoWe would have add to it. Because for example, my TV right now is 40 inches, but in the future, if I get a bigger TV, I'll probably wanna get the bigger kit and now I'll have to either buy just the LED strip and then have two of these in the back of my TV, which is kind of clunky, or sell these or give them away to one of my siblings and then buy the new one. Probably what I would end up doing. Okay, let's talk about specs. So it includes two different pairs of bases. It includes these bases, which are the removable bases. This base here does have a little rubber piece so it won't glide off too easily and it won't ruin your surfaces. So you can put them on the side of your TV but it also includes two bases that are on the back of my TV right now that is glued on. On The problem with my TV is that it's actually curved so it can't really stick on very well so I kind of just have half of it sticking on and then I kept the tape on the other half so it wouldn't be exposed tape and the stickiness would still stay sticky and it's been working fine it hasn't fallen off at all and I've been able to remove it, put it back on without any issues. You also get this control box, which has the microphone and some basic functionalities on here. Uh, power on, lighting. I don't play with this control box. You have the power input. You have a USB for your flow bars. These are both connected via one wire right here. So it could be a little bit of a clunky wire management system on the back, but nowadays, what isn't? Just have to find a way to kind of hide those. And then you have the other one for the camera. This is different from the Hues because it actually uses a camera to detect what's on the screen in terms of color. Because of that, there's an actual slight delay. It's maybe half a second. I thought that would bother me quite a bit, but when you play with all the settings and you really focus on the movie and you have the right kinds of TV shows and movies on, 
I don't find it actually bothersome, but I'll get into that later. I have heard Govi mention they're working on some sort of HDMI sync box that would effectively really be a Philips Hughes killer because technically that would mean that the color accuracy and the delay would no longer be an issue, which is fantastic. And hopefully users like me will be able to upgrade because that would suck if you have to buy a brand new one. So fingers crossed on that one. The LED lights, they say it has 60 million colors. I don't know how many LEDs it has, but I do know that it's sectioned off into six different sections because you can control those six different sections on each one via the app. So you can play with different colors if you want. They have what's called RGBICWW, which I think is a thing that they invented because if you go online and you type that in, you won't find anything else except for Govi products pop up. RGB being red, green, blue. The I and the C, I'm not 100% sure what they are. The C might be for Scion. And then the WW, I believe, is for warm white because you can get white on here. You can play with warm white, you can play with cool white. Oh, that's what the CW is, cool white. So I still don't know what the I is. Intelligent, intelligent cool white, warm white. Unfortunately, one thing that they failed to mention conveniently is a lifetime hours of these lights. I wrote them an email to inquire. They just told me it depends on the environment. It depends on your lighting situation and what you use it for. Um, and there's a one year warranty. So it's extremely vague. So just like fingers crossed that this will last. Customer service has been pretty good so far. It could take a couple back and forth before getting your answer, but they're pretty good to reply. And you can also write to them on the app. But the app messaging and forum is quite messy and difficult to understand. So I would just, if you have any issues, I would just email them instead. This as well has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, the Flowbar Pro. I know other versions that they have, the cheaper ones don't have necessarily Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. So you can control it via your smart home. In terms of pricing, it's 80 US and 105 Canadian. In terms of installation and setting it up, I actually found that installing the bars a little bit higher, instead of putting the two bases on the center point, I actually had it two thirds up on the TV. That actually corresponds with something that I found online with one of their manuals that did show it that way. I had originally set it in the middle and I found that it was a little bit uneven and it wasn't lighting in the background quite evenly. I suspect it might have something to do with the angle as to where you're viewing it from. So if your TV is a little bit higher or a little bit lower, probably higher. So if your TV is a little bit higher than your viewing height, then you will need to compensate with that installation. So play around with it. If you have a friend that can help you, if not, you know, put the sticky on there, but very lightly so it's not permanently glued and play with the height adjustment until you find what you like. In terms of setting it up, pretty straightforward. They also include these little stickies that you stick all around your TV, follow their instructions. There's also somebody online that made a video that has these on there. So it's easier to put that on your TV and then put these on top and guide. You match it with the different dots on the app so that it's able to understand the perspective and where your TV is in case you didn't install the camera perfectly. And the camera you can actually mount it on the top or on the bottom. I mounted it on the bottom because I found it was less visually distracting. It didn't really show. Although I think mounting it on the top would have been better for color accuracy in my scenario, my situation because I have lights nearby. I have like a ceiling light above. I had a little bit of an issue connecting the flow bars as well as the wall glides. It just was not connecting for some reason and then trying it a few times eventually connected and I, I have no explanation for it. I contacted Govi to get help. At some point it just like worked. So that could be an issue for you. I don't know if it's been updated in any of their newer software updates. They are constantly updating their app. So that's also a really great thing, which brings me into the app. It's a bit clunky. There's a little bit of a learning curve. On the app, if you're in the home section, you can see all of your devices. You can group them by different rooms. You can group them as well by same model or different features that they have, Bluetooth. You can also set commands so you can have it set on and off on a timer. The world icon, which I find is a little bit odd of an icon, is where you can see what other people have done and you can also apply it if it's applicable to your light. Or you can see different colors, so you can see different effects that people have done. And in this case, you can see here the lighting effect. You can star it, you can apply it, and if, it, if it's applicable, it'll apply directly onto your light. I don't find it the most easy to navigate personally. I don't see any for the Flowbar Pro right now. It's usually a lot of LED lights because you could do a lot more with those strips than a Flowbar Pro. 
like the wall glide, you could do so much more. And then in the middle, this is the forum section. You can get a lot of insight news. You can get, uh, you can write questions. You can speak to other people. It can be really interesting to be on here, but it can also be quite difficult to follow um, all of the different threads and stuff like that. And there's a store in here, and then there's your account with points. And these points you can actually use to purchase certain things and redeem them. And you can also contact the GoFee team directly onto this app and you can follow up with your issues right here. Controlling the device with the app has a slight delay, which I don't love. I don't know if it's because of the Bluetooth or the Wi-Fi or it's both. It's like a one to two second delay before it connects to the app and then you can enter it and control it. So that can be annoying when you're learning it and fiddling around with it. But after having it for quite a while, you don't necessarily go into the app all the time to play with all the settings. Once you start to know what you like in there and what you're using, you're unlikely to keep going back and forth. Like in my case, I'm pretty much just swapping between music and movie and on off. And the on off I can control through my Google Home. And that brings me to smart home connection. So it does work with Alexa and it does work with Google Home. It's quite limiting so far on what you can do with that. You can turn it on and off. Okay, Google, turn on flow bar. You can name different colors, like you can change the brightness, but you cannot change music mode or movie mode, which I would have really liked. I would have really liked if you would have been able to program certain things or program voice commands that you have a preset movie mode with all the settings that you like, and then you can just use a specific voice command and it would trigger. That would be fantastic, but they're not quite there yet. It is a request that has been put in. You can request a lot of these features as well on their, on their app. And, they tend to listen and hopefully that is something they will do. I have already seen improvements on the app and added features since getting the product about a month ago, two months, a month, a month and a half ago. So they're progressing quite quickly. That is definitely a good thing with this ecosystem is they're constantly improving it. They're really, they really seem to be a dedicated team. In terms of movie mode, which is what I primarily purchased this for, you can do a couple of things. There's a full screen mode and then they added a split screen mode in one of their later updates. But when I bought it, the split screen was already there. And so split screen, what it does is the left and right are able to pick up a color on the right or left. I'm not sure which color they're picking up. So sometimes it's not necessarily the color you think they're gonna pick up on the right or left if you're staring at it, but otherwise it's, it's fine. It's just ambiance lighting. And that's really cool because it'll display left and right. Full screen, I don't use that. It just picks some sort of color, I guess, in the middle, and then it displays that on both of them at the same time. Split screen is much more immersive, much more cool, much more ambiance. And because I do know there are six segments and you can, on the app, you can control those six different segments. I did ask if they are planning on having a capability of being able to segment the different elements on the screen and pick up different vertical heights on the screen and then display them here so that it really projects the color and really just extends the color on the screen instead of just picking one random color and then you lighting up that entire thing. And they said, yes, that they will be doing that. And by the way, the LED strips gives you way more immersion around like that because it really picks up the various colors on the entire screen and then projects it on the LED. So it really does extend the colors on all of the edges. Because I knew that the LED strip did that, I knew that the technology was capable of doing that. And the camera was able to pick that up. And it was more a matter of programming. I believe it's coming up in the next update. So by the time you buy this, maybe it'll already have been here. You can also set the microphone to pulse a little bit along with a split screen while the movie's playing, but I think that would be rather distracting. So I don't have that on personally. I think the only time I actually did use that was when I had a music concert playing in the back and I was just having a dance party by myself. You know, play around with it. That's, it's gonna, everything here is gonna boil down to personal preference. And so now about color accuracy. The camera will pick up lighting around your place. If you have an overhead light and your camera is on the bottom looking upwards, it's gonna pick that up and it will affect the color that it displays on the flow bars and it will be a little bit inaccurate. So factor in the different lightings that you have. They even mention in some of their installation videos to move away any floor lamps or turn them off. That means also I like having a candle sometimes on my TV media unit. That means that I don't usually have a candle on while I have this running. If you have it on the top of your TV and it's facing downwards, you might have less of an issue, but I don't think it's 
it's gonna look as nice, it might stick out. Really depends how much you care or not about that. So the color accuracy is a little bit off at times. I just noticed that actually today, I don't know when it updated, but that there was a white balance. And that's really cool, but the white balance was really just, it was a blue versus a red, which I think usually for white balance, you would be playing with the blue to orange for warm and cold, and you would be playing with tint between green and red. So I guess they kind of combine this. It works more or less well. For me, I moved my slider all the way to the red and it did help a little bit with the color accuracy. There's limitations to the hardware. There's limitation to the camera. At the end of the day, how much did it bother me? Not that much. It, it's an ambiance lighting is the way I see it. So this might not be something that'll bother you and it might be different in your home setting and your TV it can vary. So I'm just saying how the experience has been for me, but I'm also saying it doesn't really bother me that much. Even the slight delay of the device camera picking up the color and then syncing it to here. So there's that slight half a second delay, I would say to display the color. I didn't find that that bothersome either. And in terms of the color accuracy, the tip that I would have, and this is what I've seen other people do, is to lower the saturation all the way down to the bare minimum. My brightness is set to like a 20%. Play around with the percentages, see where you land. I found that that muted it quite a bit and also it was less distracting because I want the TV to be the focus and I want this to just be ambiance lighting. I, I don't use this for every single TV and movie ex watching experience. It doesn't always work that well. For quick action scenes, so I just watched Eternals and I found it didn't work that well sometimes or there'd be a lot of moving items and it looked like it was flickering, but it's just because there's so much happening on the screen that it's constantly adjusting. I don't know if that would happen with the HDMI sync box. It may, it may not. This will remain to be seen when they do invent it and how they calculate whatever they're calculating on the screen. Just quick action movies, I don't find it would necessarily work that well. TV shows, like I watched Shit's Creek on it and I didn't find that worked that well with it either because it wasn't really a TV show that I was needing ambiance. It's kind of like a rural area, very like kind of bland background setting, small town. It wasn't made to be like super high intense visual focus. What I did find it worked really, really well with that I was just so immersed was Arcane. I don't even think I like the show that much, but I got these at the same time Arcane came out and everyone was telling me I had to watch Arcane. And let me tell you, if you want to really test these out, put Arcane on. It was amazing because there's so many bright colors in there. I noticed there was a lot of intentionality with the colors and the mood settings that they have. Those kinds of shows and, and movies would work really well with this. Try Arcane with it. You will not regret it. There's like tons of things glowing and things moving. And at one point there was a scene with the flashlight going left and right. And then on this, it was going left and right. And it was just like mind boggling. I loved it. Kind of made me feel like I had a bigger TV actually. So I, that itch to get a bigger TV is kind of not quite there because now like the back wall, which is white. You, that's also a thing. Your back wall should be white if you want this to really work well. Otherwise color accuracy, that's a whole other topic. It will not be accurate. It was just like, it was wonderful. In terms of music mode, well, I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna show you the different music modes and what I like playing. Play around with it, see what you like. couple of little other negatives that I had. I mentioned that it was a bit clunky. There's a lot of wire management. Also, if you're putting this in the back of your TV versus an LED strip, if you're gluing these on the back of the TV like I had done on mine, it's a bit clunky to look at as well. If you have one of those super thin new LED TVs, it might not be so elegant stuck on the back. 
but then you could always get the immersion kit for a bigger TV, or you can just get the LED strip one. And I would assume that a lot of these features that I mentioned would carry over. So who is this for? I would say for people that are on a budget, they just want something for everything that can do movies and music, but it's more movie forward than I would say than music forward because music forward, I would get the wall glides. I guess I could say it's for people on a budget just because it's not their most expensive item and it's definitely cheaper than the Philips Hue ecosystem. And it's for people that don't necessarily mind an imperfect product. But on the positives that I have to say, it is a company that is constantly evolving, constantly adding stuff. There's a point system too on the app. When you write more comments and you're just involved in the community, you're able to get these GoVee points and get free products and stuff like that. So they're really involved with their community and they're constantly listening to what people have to say. That community is huge. There's like really big GoVee fans. That's the impression I'm getting from just spending a little bit of time on the app and the communities. There are some people that are really, really on there quite a bit and have badges and all these other stuff like that. So they're, they're yeah. So if you don't mind an imperfect product, but you like the fact that they're constantly evolving and they're constantly adding new settings and new modes and new color. They have sometimes like Christmas modes and Thanksgiving modes and you can like click on it and it shows right away. Then great, this is a product for you. In my case, it removed that itch of getting a bigger TV. Just decided I don't actually really need a new TV. And then I got these and oh, I'm pretty happy now with my TV. It just made everything so much better. <laughs> made me appreciate my TV even more. To end this video, I would like to say I really like this product and if I had to do it all over again, I would actually still buy this all over again, the same one. The only difference that I might have done if I wanted to future-proof it for myself is I might have bought the immersion kit so I would have had that LED bar as well and then also had the flow bars. But I'm very satisfied with this overall, even with its negatives. I love it despite its flaws because it tries so hard. It tries so hard and it keeps working on itself. And I can relate to that. It's a work in progress. And if you do get it, comment below, let me know how you like it. Let me know what your favorite music and movie modes are or your favorite do-it-yourself uh, modes are. And like the video if you found this helpful, that would be really appreciated. Comment, share, just subscribe if you haven't already, hit the bell notification. And I will see you in the next video. And there will be some more Govee contents coming up. Hint, hint. Bye.